on this episode of AV Week, NAB and Enterprise Connect both cancel their in-person events uh, this week, looking at Zoomtopia and the announcements coming out of there, and the rise of NDI in AV. All that and more, next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 526, recorded Friday, September 17th, 2021. We'll do it live. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Atlas IED, innovative audio solutions for every business environment. And by Chief, the global leader in commercial AV mounting solutions. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap-up of audiovisual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host. With us to discuss the news and information we have gathered this week, first and foremost, her name is Charmaine Torella. I cannot roll my R's, but she's fantastic, and she's with Varex. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, just down the coast from you is a young man by the name of Hanan uh, Aberbach. Uh, he is from Prime View, uh, and now he is in the beautiful state of Florida. Welcome, sir. Thank God. Thank God. Fred, great to be here. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Happy Friday as well. This is just water. Uh, it's just Well, you know, it, it is the afternoon where you are. Um, and last but not least, a young man that the last time I talked to him, he worked for a manufacturer. Now he works for an integrator because that's where all the cool kids work. Hanan. Um, <laughs> Chris Fitzsimmons, 100%. currently with AVISPL. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be back. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, and you. So we, uh, this is going to be a very, very long story. We're going to talk about Infocom. We're going to talk about COVID because, you know, why the heck not? Because there's nothing else going on. Uh, about a week or so ago, I had the uh, incredible pleasure to, to uh, interview Dave Labuskis uh, about Infocom and about the fact that, that they're going and they're, they're all in and everything. Um, and then a couple things happened this week. And uh, Dave made the rounds with some fantastic people, my buggy. Uh, buddy Megan Dutta got a chance. Uh, Dan over at uh, Santa Communications um, sat down with him. Um, Cindy Davis over at Future. So some great, uh, great interviews that that Mr. Labuskus did. Again, to highlight the fact that they're still going. Why did he feel the need to do it uh, two weeks in a row? Well, a little show called National Association of Broadcasters canceled this week. Uh, NAB uh, is one of the top four biggest shows happens in Vegas every single year. Uh, they decided to say, you know what, kids, uh, we're going to pull the plug and we'll see you all in April. Uh, Enterprise Connect, uh, later that afternoon, also did the exact same thing, uh, saying that they are going virtual this year. A uh, couple things here to point out. Number one, Enterprise Connect is was, was scheduled to happen in Orlando, which is where Infocom is happening. NAB was scheduled to happen in Vegas. Las Vegas and Nevada have a couple more tools in their belt uh, to, to fight against uh, COVID and infections and stuff due to some uh, legislation and, and some executive orders passed in Florida and, and not passed in, in, uh, in Nevada. I think I said that with as little political crap as possible, but if I didn't, Tim at avianation.tv, you can yell at me later. Uh, Charmaine, we'll start with you. What does all of this mean when we're looking at, at um, exhibitors who there are some that have pulled out from Infocom. I think uh, Mr. Labuska said they're sitting about 400 uh, exhibitors right about now. Uh, the registration is is the trajectory is hitting about 27, 25,000, I think, when I interviewed him. Is this, what does this say for the industry? What does this say for uh, exhibitors and for the, the users that are planning on going? Well, first and foremost, congratulations on that interview with David Labuskus. I watched the whole thing on YouTube. It was excellent, excellent job on your part. Well, thank you, ma'am. Great interview. Um, what it's saying is that the industry has to recalculate itself now going forward, right? So the industry has to, is now, during COVID, what happened when we were shut down, and I said this a lot of times to a lot of people, now everyone is learning how to be without a trade show. So they're doing the virtual events. They're learning that they can still get as much engagement virtually as they did in person, maybe even more so. And when it's over, they're going to start factoring these virtual events and regional shows 
into their repertoire going forward to get a deeper penetration of engagement across the world, across the country. So basically um, what this means is that's where it's going with the manufacturers. That's where it's going with a lot of the industry. They've learned how to do this now. They had a whole year, 18 months, and they learned also in doing it that they saved a lot of money. So trade shows, at this point, this is the opportunity for the Avixas, the NABs of the world, the CDS, to re-envision their trade shows in a capacity that will not only just be live, but also give them that virtual engagement. Like watching your interview with David Labuskas, he talked about digital information, right? We want to present this, we thought about presenting it in a digital way and you know, figuring out who, how many people look at this virtual exhibit and presenting that information. That information is very valuable to the integrators, the manufacturers, the technology managers of the world to understand where the interest of the market lies. And in the regular Infocom world, yeah, you get that if you scan into an exhibit, but not everyone scans, right? But if you have that digital component that can do that with a digital audience, you'll get more information, more data that can be very useful in creating you know, insight into the market. So that's what that means. Now we have to re-envision how the AV world is engaging in this world and not just by trade shows. We learned how to do it and would not spend all that money on booths. And everyone is now still on that track to still re-engage in a different manner. So, All right, Anand, uh, talk for a second about the, oh, the, the ability and, and the, uh, to, to show certain types of technology um, virtually, right? Um, Prime view, not for nothing, the direct view LED manufacturer, right? Um, you can get away with a little bit of that virtually, uh, but when you start talking about microphones, you start talking about speakers, you start talking about other things, how do we as an industry show off some of these things and demonstrate um, what it is that is new and better and, and faster and stronger? So I think it's definitely a challenge, um, but you know, in that regard, I completely disagree with the Charmaine. I'm sorry. Completely disagree. I think that if you look at from a manufacturer standpoint, right, we were doing what I'd like to call not Zoomtopia, but Zoombud, where people are so much time, video presentations for the six months, year into COVID, and it drove the people nuts on all these virtual platforms. So we actually made a conscious decision, I want to say about a year and a half ago, to make a multi-million dollar investment into, sorry to say this, but a Republican state like Florida, and to create a multi-million dollar experience center where we partner with Logitech, uh, Aurora, and a bunch of other manufacturers to create an experience center that regardless of what happens, COVID this or COVID Delta or COVID American, COVID JetBlue, whatever the next version will be of the variant, that we're going to be in a position to demonstrate product. And we believe strongly that it's a lifeline to end users and integrators because like you said, if you can't physically see this stuff on a visual level, it means nothing. And like, not everyone has a Logitech meetup in their little small rooms where they could see things with a good quality. You know what I mean? Like we had to literally wire our entire, I don't know how many people here are familiar with NDI, but we made a huge investment into NDI infrastructure so that not only is our entire showroom AV over IP, so that the South Florida office of Varex or AVI Spail can bring a customer to see it. But also when a customer does not feel comfortable, we could do a virtual demo and they can see everything in real time. So we could do both. So we created a hybrid model for our demos. So I think there's gonna always be people that are more COVID comfortable, COVID not comfortable, vaccine, no vaccine. And we wanna be there to embrace both sides of the fence. And the, we, there are logic to investing so much money to the space and the attraction for manufacturers like Logitech and Aurora and Middlest Furniture and Wolfish, and all these manufacturers to come and join the party is because they know that if I have an AVISB office in Portland, Oregon, that wants to see something that they can't see at Infocom or NAB because it's not happening, well, I could fly them in for two, three, four hundred dollars and literally show every example. So we really put our money where our mouth is and the smart manufacturers join the party quickly. And we're in a position now that if you're building a sports bar, I have a mini sports bar experience. 
You're doing a gaming environment with an esports environment for you, a broadcast environment for you, a mini soccer pitch even. I mean, so we really created every environment because I genuinely believe COVID's not going away anytime soon. It's just not. Mm -hmm. And I think the government sort of likes living our world in fear and I, I don't want customers to feel the same way. Mm -hmm. So we're really prepared for what's to come next and we're definitely open and we have so much technology on the security side as well to make sure that the show is going to go on regardless of what's going on on a political level or vaccine level or widespread issue. And just just to jump in on that, Kanan, you're not really disagreeing with me when you, you, when you flesh it out. <laughs> Two things can be true at the same time. Like I said, you're re-envisioning what you just said. You built out an experience center in Florida. You're not centralizing all your exhibits into an NAB or an Infocom. So they're both, everything I said is true as well as what you said is true. It is a hybrid and you are reconfiguring that to where you're making it more regional and you're not just reliant on Infocom or NAB or something to be the only way, right? That you exhibit your products and you're gonna do virtual. So both things are true at the same time. Two things can be true at the same time. All right, Mr. Uh, Fitzsimmons, uh, you've been on actually three sides of this this side because uh, Chris started out uh, in the Able world as, uh, as an editor. Um, uh, we're across I've the retired college. three times now. Yeah. Two um, times. I've retired twice, yeah. But you're yeah. awfully young yeah. to retired. So I know. I've got some little bit of... And little this bit. obviously you is started to, started to shave the head. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, that, that's not new either. But yeah, so... Having looked at this from both, I like I and I like the comment Charmaine and actually both Charmaine and Charmaine made about the distribution. Right, this is everything we're doing as people right now is about deciding how comfortable we are with what group, what sized group of people we want to be around. Honestly, so Infocom happens or doesn't, I think the the thing will happen is that less people will visit, and those that will visit will be happy probably and have a great time. But I don't see fifty five. 75,000 people w being willing at the same time to be in the same convention center anytime soon, unless there's like some giant gig, which I saw in Europe last week. Um, and so this idea of having experience centers and individual briefings actually is a great one. We should be doing that anyway. It's a much more personalized experience. As From a manufacturer's point of view, we used to spend half our annual marketing budget or thereabouts on two trade shows, right? What, is that a good strategy or not? I don't know. Not my decision. Uh, it is definitely a thing that happened because it's always happened, not because it was necessarily the right thing to do. So the opportunity to do more personalized events where you get closer touch with customers and more intimate conversations, like you can get in an experience center with 25, 30 people instead of I know, you guys have been on a buy amp booth or a restaurant booth or whatever booth. Yeah. Right. So the idea that you have a meaningful sales interaction or demonstration of a product at that in that setting is nonsense, right? So I actually think it's a positive thing for us as marketers or as manufacturers or as integrators to have those more meaningful conversations. So whether that's at a show or, or an experience center or whatever, I, you know, I think that's just an improvement in the situation in general. Um, from the integration point of view, talking to our customers, uh, and I'm very focused on the Microsoft, I am a in the Microsoft practice at AVSPL. So it's a lot around Teams, Teams rooms, hybrid work, you know, all the buzz phrases that Microsoft's throwing out. That whole process is around helping people choose how they want to interact and making them all feel equal no matter what choice they made, right? So this, the technology around front row, putting everybody in an equally sized box at the bottom of the display and showing everybody at home individual headshots of people around a big table instead of just a big table shot. All of that is about meaning that wherever you sit, wherever you choose to do business, you are an equal participant in a conversation and you're not missing out or you're not, not heard. Um, so it's the same. It's really the same, right? It's whether it's giant trade show or experience center or giant boardroom and a bunch of small meeting rooms, it's the same. It's the same challenge. It's just got different. It just looks slightly different from the outside, but the underlying social mechanics of it and the technological mechanics are the same thing. How we, meet, how we communicate effectively, remotely, in person, whatever it's, you know, and it's funny, right? We, we're talking about manufacturers not showing up at trade shows. There was a very large manufacturer of video switching products that decided a decade ago, Tim, a decade not ago. to go to trade shows anymore. What did they do? They went and built a bunch of experience centers 
and training and invested those bazillions of dollars in in national experience centers and national offices and guess what they've done just fine they're still in business thank you very much yeah. <laughs> well, it, is the yeah, extron still going well i was so. gonna say just, just for full transparency number one extron's a sponsor of this of this fine network number two I was w among the folks who ranted and railed at Extron for, for leaving. Um, it was a detriment to the, to the industry is what I said, I think, at that point. I don't remember. It was 10 years ago, dude. I barely remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. But I, I certainly do remember being among the folks who said that, that they were making a mistake. And Chris, you're right. They have proved at least me wrong, which is not saying much. My kids do it every day. But, you know... Um, you're right. They they've proved themselves that they don't. Now here, now here's the thing, and 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 I know a lot of folks at, at Extron. Uh, I know a lot of them listen to this program. They would tell you they didn't stop going to trade shows, right? No, because they, they just stopped buying a giant booth. They stopped buying a giant booth, right? And they they have not exhibited at Infocom, US, nor have they exhibited at Integrated Systems Europe, the other large trade show globally. They have done regional shows. They've done other things. They are still involved in, yeah. in Avixa. Um, they simply stopped those two large expenses. And you're right. They, they did invest that other ways. Um, one thing, that, the other thing I know from, from my days as, as a tech manager, they will also, a lot of times, they will fly, um, uh, they would fly uh, decision makers as well as uh, consultants and, and engineers to Anaheim, right, which is, which is their, their global headquarters. So it can be done. The question is then, not for Extron, right? Not for Crestron, not for the, the big boost that you're going to see or, or miss at, at the show, but for the folks that are in the back 40, right? The 10 by 10s, the tabletops. Yeah. How do we help them? Because yes. they're the ones who, who benefit as much or more than the big sponsors. Yeah, and, and to some extent, the other side of that is the big sponsors owe oh, don't know, have a duty or a maybe a responsibility to help grow the industry and support those back row guys, right? Because what do those big companies do? They invest, they buy those back row guys or they don't. And without that pool of innovation, you don't get progress, right? You don't get new ideas. So I, it is tricky. It's hard. Um, because those guys don't have money for an experience center, right? Yeah, but some of those big guys, let's take the display manufacturers like an LG, right? Or they do. Primeview is a big menu. Or Primeview, right? They do. Sorry, Kanan. I'm not leaving you out, but I'm just thinking about the LG Roadshow. A lot of times, LG Roadshows will have those small tabletop guys in their roadshows, right? They mm -hmm. will have, you know, Bluefin or who ha or AppSpace or whatever yep. also there, and they fold them in and they do a, it's like a collaborative regional experience. Um, so there are some manufacturers that kind of have that example where they do do that. And I think it's just going to keep growing now post COVID where, you know, Crestron does that too. You know, they have some other people that they showcase with as well. So to, to your point, I would say, um, I think that the smaller to, to you know, to medium sized firms, actually benefit more than the large firms because it sort of levels the playing field on how your marketing yeah. dollars can work. I mean, I have been going for the last five years supporting some of my Midwest partners, for example, go, helping them in their different offices around the country doing pop-up demos and pop-up events. I've been doing that for five years and not relying on an Infocom or an NAB to close a business. So. The fact that we honestly developed mobile solutions when everyone in the market thought we were crazy before the cart option came up from others, we developed that and we got lucky because when, for argument's sake, one of Tim's internal guys had an event actually in St. Louis, we popped up there with a huge LED wall in a matter of four hours, we were good to go and we had an all day event. And I did actually yeah. the same thing um, over, uh, over, over this week with Chris's guys here in South Florida, where AVI Spiel hosted like a, an AV workplace technology panel. And literally we popped up and we had a beautiful LED system that was set up in a matter of hours. I checked out for my Yom Kippur holiday yesterday and my guys are breaking it down today. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy to do. And I think, I think that's a segue into also workplace technology, which is you're gonna have people that wanna do things on the fly and make budgets go further as well. So I think you're going to see a multi-purpose room 
that's going to functionally also going to grab a display and say, let's put this in the lobby now. And then we use that same budget. And I'm seeing already that from large financial institutions where no one's even in the damn building right now. <laughs> They're, everyone's going to go back to the office September. Now it's pushed out till January. So it's a trend. Uh, so I was going to, let me ask you this, and then we'll, we'll wrap up this because I, I, I don't want to talk about this every week. There is something that happens every week, so we kind of have to. What does this look like next year? What does this look like in 23? What does it look like in 24? I'm not saying that Infocom is not going to happen in, in 2021. I have no vision of that one way or the other. There are certain folks that are dropping out. Labuskas even said it last week when I interviewed him and said it this week when, when Megan and, and everybody else interviewed him. He is not you know, ignorant to the fact that there are going to be some folks still drop out between now and the end of October. <laughs> so this will certainly be a smaller version of Infocom. But what does NAB look like in 23, 24? Are you guys saying that this is the trend for the future and these shows will become smaller in general? Or is it going to be, we're in a pandemic, this is gonna to move to an endemic, uh, which I had to look that, look that, um, uh, that uh, word up this week. Um, but it's something where it's, it's manageable, it, it's doable, um, but it's, it's still with us, this, this virus, this disease. So what do trade shows like this look like moving forward? If I could take a first swing at this, if you don't mind. Um, nope. So, you know, I'm a, I'm an Orthodox Jew and, you know, one of the biggest struggles for us is synagogue, right? We try to congregate on a daily basis, if not on a weekly basis. And every Orthodox rabbi, every conservative rabbi coming up on the high holidays and even before that had the same exact concern, which is there was a period of time where these houses of worship were closed, right? And then it's like, wow, how do we market ourselves as an, you know, as a non-for-profit organization, religious organization, how do we get people to feel comfortable coming back to church? Not only that, how do we get an option, like Charmaine said, a virtual model where people can also do virtual? And it's very interesting that a lot of rabbis had to, and churches as well, that, I mean, we do a lot of work with First Baptist churches all over the country, they had to change their model and say, we may not be able to get donations from the little tray that goes around all the time, right? In, in that charity box in the world of the synagogue, it's the, what's called the tzedakah box. It's the same thing. So it's the same challenge is that, wow, we have to market ourselves how to get people to do things on a virtual level and a physical level. And in certain places like California, those churches are closed for business. And they, some places in California are still closed. And other areas of the countries that are different color, not blue, not red, whatever they want, want to call it, they are back open for business. And it's very interesting to see that they have to retool and think about as a, as, a, um, as a religious organization, how to attract people to come back again. So I think that's gonna be the same thing where you have to create value at the end of the day, as an Avixa, as an Infocom, as an NAB, you have to give it a reason for people to come. Otherwise, they're not gonna come. There has to be a special draw that you could only get when you go to the events. And it's the same thing when you go to any, I think, house of worship. There's something special you get with the energy in that room. I, that's what it is, I think, for me. I've had lots of conversations with Avixa on this over, since last year, right? Um, in terms of, you know, one of the problems being live with Avixa, as we all know, big pavilions, a lot of ground to cover in what, three, four days and under a week. And a lot of times we sign ourselves up for certain events and things and we find ourselves running from one area to the other, sweating to get to it, to be there on time. And we, by the time we get there, it's already started. We missed a, uh, you know, a great integral part of it or something else came up. And I would say to them, wouldn't it be nice that while you have this live event to have this virtual component that actually can stream or have this on demand, a lot of these crucial events webinars, seminars, whatever is happening at Infocom available to me. So if I'm finished up at one event, I cannot run <laughs> and I can stay within a certain area and from my tablet or my PC, just participate, right? We can still be at the show, but the truth is there's so much to see at these shows. It's not always possible for everyone to attend and participate. So the virtual component is I think what's going to happen futuristically in some capacity, I don't know how, 
I know that ISC, Mr. Blackman, was do, did that, right? He was working on that for ISC because he felt that would, you know, for the kind of show ISC is, we're talking about it's very global, a lot of participants that weren't going to be able to make it live to give them an additional component to make it possible for them to at least be a part of it, to participate. So I think the shows are going to look a little bit different. It's still going to be live, but there's going to be some virtual components, some apps perhaps. You know, Infocom has that app that, you know, you're able to see where the exhibitors are. They could graduate that. They could evolve that. NAB could do something similar using more, uh, you know, digital engagement especially for the show that it is, that's where that's their wheelhouse, right? I see the shows kind of going in that direction. Also, maybe a Vixen NAB becoming a little more regional, maybe breaking themselves up a little bit. That's a possibility as well. I think in order to keep that engagement, that's where it's going because that's where it's going with the manufacturers and everyone else. So there, it's a trend. It's happening. Enterprise Connect, Gartner Symposium, Everyone is going down this this trend. Thanks so much for watching this first segment, segment of AV Week. To check out the rest of the episode for free, click on the link below or go by the website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.